Right. So, yes, Veronica, I'm glad you're here. So how did you become a Christian? Um, well, I've, I've always said always said that I was a Christian in, in the way that people who are brought up, with, you know, in my background, to, you know, would consider themselves a Christian. Went to Sunday school as a, a small child and that was about it. And uh, when I was 20, someone actually asked me, if, if I was a Christian, if I believed in Jesus Christ. And it was an out-of-the-blue question at that time of my life. And for the first time, I really thought about it. And I said, well, as an adult, and I said, well, yes, yes, I am. And as I said that, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, I was filled from the toes up because I was empty. And I, I floated off the ground for like 45 minutes, I mean... It was the best. So it was a, a, you know, being filled with the Holy Spirit. It was a touch of heaven. And, um, you know, then I, I wasn't affiliated with any churches. I wasn't educated. So I just went on my, uh, you know, my life's journey, I suppose. And I'd always had prophetic dreams. I'd always seen lights around people. I'd seen, uh, felt spirits, I guess anything I thought was evil, I'd always said, you know, go away in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I knew enough to do that. Mm-hmm. But uh, as I got older, um, the prophetic dreams I were, were having were very powerful. And the visions I was having of, of the destruction, the coming destruction, the, the end of the world, if you like, but I knew it wasn't the planet wasn't going to end. I knew there was going to be great depopulation and that everyone left over would love each other and it would be all lovely, which is pretty much the whole New World Order gig, I guess. And um, so, but I, just by chance, one day I came across a dream someone someone's child had had, actually. And she she's saying it, it was on YouTube and she said, my child, and I saw this picture of this dream this child had, and I thought, well, that's the same dream I had. And she said it was about the rapture. So I started looking into the rapture and then realised that I'd been uh, dreaming the Bible, dreaming revelation, and I'd, I didn't know the Bible. So I started... Uh, educating myself on YouTube and Googling everything I could. Google's great. You can find anything. And I started looking into the end times and the new world order, which had never worried me before. I'd seen some great conspiracy stuff, you know, new world order stuff. I knew it was real. I knew that they were uh, wicked and greedy men. I didn't realise it was actually Satan behind it Um, and it was during that that I realised the the realisation came, okay, you know like I know Jesus is real, I now know the Bible's real, I then have to I, I then have to ask the question to God is the devil real and when I asked that question I got free tickets to an Iggy Pop concert. Okay. And I'd been a fan of Iggy for years. Um, and I went to this gig, prepared to have a great night. All right. The last thing I was thinking about was that I, the God was going to answer my question that night. And at one stage, as part of his show, his you know his polished show, has got all the lines, and he put his hand around the face of someone in front of him, a, a young girl, and he said, and, you know, you're so beautiful, but let me tell you, the devil's going to take your soul. And I just thought, I'm a satanic mess. Iggy Pop is an imp of Satan doing his work and get me out of here, Jesus. And I, I fled the concert. <laughs> I never go to another one. Oh, I couldn't believe it, you know. <laughs> God certainly answered my question. And uh, 
Because they are, they are Luciferians. That's what they are. They're Satanists, aren't they? Well, it was... It was uh, I don't know. I, I haven't looked into it. I just started looking into God then. The last thing I wanted to do was look into e Pop. Although I did pray for him, I wondered if there was any hope. But it was just frightening because there were, you know, whole families there. People had taken their kids to see them, you know, like their adult children. So yeah. it's, it's frightening to see the masses. The, ma- the masses... You know, it breaks my heart that you're the people that are going to fall. Praise God, I've found my faith. I've been given the gift of faith by the Lord. You know. So can I ask one more question? You know about yeah. the New World Order. How yes. did you get into the revelation of the New World Order and then go into the Vatican or the Jesuits? Well, get to that? well, you know, I, um, you know, once I realised the Bible was real, and then put two and two together and came up with seven, that you know, that the devil was behind the New World Order and and I knew that the Pope was wicked, right? I mean, I do know, you know, I'd always felt stuff about what was good and what was evil to it at some degree, you know. I did obviously, you know, it took me a while to get it, but I knew the Pope was wicked. So I was actually researching the, the Pope being wicked <laughs> and I came across your videos Okay. Yeah. And I start, so that's when I started watching your channel. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I do a lot of Bible study on YouTube. It's a great place to do Bible study. So, uh, you know, I, I break it up by by watching your stuff and 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 uh, um and uh, and other and other preachers because I like you because you're a preacher also. Like mm-hmm. you're a man of God, Ellen. That's why I like listening to you because I know you're coming from that place the same which that I come from so I can yeah. trust, trust there you know yeah. and um, and and yeah I realised the New World Order was absolutely satanic absolutely real uh, the Pope's the last Pope we're all the mark of the beast is coming that's right yeah uh, the mark of the beast is coming and well, that, that's uh, right I mean you'll find that a lot of people on the internet you know that expose the new world order they don't talk about Jesus Christ if you notice that they don't preach yeah. the gospel they don't talk yeah. about the great white throne they don't talk about the fact that you know life is eternal and when you think of a life to Jesus that doesn't happen you know all of these so called new age people like David Icke or Texie Marsh you'll talk about Zionism or even Alex Jones you know John Maxwell none of them talk about salvation and I would just like to state very clearly that I have been saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Right? Praise the Lord. You know, and um, the, the thing that really upsets me, though, I have to pray on a lot, is how we have all been seduced and deceived by technology. And, and technology, a lot of God's good work can be done, obviously, you know, uh, the education, you know, YouTube, all, all of this, it's still allowing Christians to connect. That's but, right, yeah. You know, but I really weep because I know that we are all going to see people we love taking the mark of the beast and the attitude's not going to be too much different now because the, the masses aren't going to realise we're in the Great Tribulation. Like, we'll all be running around knowing, Right that it's here, and they'll just be, you know, this, the same mocking attitude towards us. I mean, the mark of the beast will be on the front cover of Vogue as the latest accessory, you know? That's a good it'll point. The, it's a good it'll conversation. Be the man, it'll be the man of the year on Time magazine, you know? Well, that's it. And they will also use the internet to, you know, enforce the mark of the beast in the sense that you will buy and sell online. They will use the internet. Of course they will. And, you know... I'm very glad you brought that up because when it comes to this, you know, implant, it will be used to buy or sell. By that time, there'll be no economy. There'll be no economy. It'll be cashless. It'll, you know, it's all done by credit card now anyway, all of it. And so what will actually happen is you, if you resist the New World Order, all they will do is deactivate your bank account and the chip. And oh, so whatever absolutely. you have, it will be frozen. You'll have no way to resist or buy or sell unless you actually comply to the New World Order. You know? 
Oh, I know. And you know, they're going to skip gaily to do it. It'll start with the elite and they will all be just in such a hurry to get the latest cool accessory, which will be the mark of the beast, you know? I mean, I asked someone the other day, um, he is not a Christian, not into end times, not into conspiracy theories, just into having her nails done, right? And her hair done. And, and I said, you know, will you, will you take the RFID chip when it comes out, you know, when they implement it? She said, oh, it just depends what colour I can get it in. Really? They will do that. There'll be jokes like that floating around, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm the <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. I don't mean to laugh about it because it's very, very no, serious. The truth of it is that, you know, millions of people won't see any harm in this. They you know, won't. it makes no difference to them if it's actually, you know, a microchip or a credit card. I mean, you know, all of your finances are actually in a bank. And even if you draw notes from a bank, you know, notes as in IOUs, tampon notes, I mean nothing. You've got yeah. no currency behind it. You've got no gold. You've got no silver. You've got nothing. All you have is numbers on a screen. And what they can do is they can freeze that account if you resist them, and you, your chip will mean nothing. And if you haven't got a chip, you can't buy or sell. So that's can the whole. Can you imagine the, you know, the average working man when they make it mandatory, right? The average working man that lives, you know, from a week to week paycheck, right? Who's, yeah. you know, two weeks away from you know, eviction or, you know, or losing his mortgage or whatever with a, a wife and a couple of young kids and no mm-hmm. faith, right? Even ones with a faith maybe, but definitely the ones of no faith. So one day the, it'll just be, right, if you haven't got your after ID chip inserted or your mark of the beast, you know, you can't get paid, you can't access your bank account. So people will be caught out. They won't, you know, they'll just panic. They'll have, they'll have, you know, a panicking wife or a panicking husband or starving children and, and it's going to be easy to go down and take the immediate fix, take the easy way well, out, the easy road that, to help. That's the, that's the reality. Well said, Monica, well said. That's the reality of it. People mm. will do it on, you know, necessity. They will have to take this mark. But... The thing is, what's happening now on the internet is God is raising people up to expose this. The fact that it is the mark of the beast. If you take that in your right hand, you have no salvation. You will suffer the wrath of God in eternity, in hell. That's the truth. I mean, that sounds very severe. People think, well, why would God do that? Because they're ignorant. They don't understand it's the mark of Antichrist. But nevertheless, the truth is, if you take that mark, then your name is not in the book of life. And so that's why as Christians, we have to preach this and teach this and... Of course, on YouTube, people won't even listen. You know, they just want to look at entertainment, don't they? Mm. 